Hello, everybody. <laughs> and of course, we're laughing before we even start. Um, I wonder what we it's talk. her fault. It's not my um, fault. Okay, this was not on me. This was somebody said this morning that they think of us as Laurel and Hardy. So, in the comments, I would like somebody to point out who's who. <laughs> we think we know who it is, but you can help us out here. Okay. Or we could come up with, like, other references that, you know, like... No, I, it's or We could be Martin and Lewis. I know I'm Martin. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I, I was thinking of, you know, like, you know, something a little bit more attractive. <laughs> than Dean Martin? <laughs> I don't know. We'll have to go along. Okay, you know what? I wouldn't mind being Dean Martin if... Because then I would be tall and skinny instead of short and squat. <laughs> Jerry Lewis was tall and skinny. Yeah. And funny. Okay. There, there you go. go. Whatever. I like the tall and skinny parts of fine. Dean Martin could <laughs> sing. <laughs> Moving on. Some too. of the things we want to bring to you this week. <laughs> okay. Kona Club is back. Uh, is some interesting so fabric <laughs> choices and patterns. I've already picked out a few for myself. They'll do one for me. And one for each of my grandchildren. Somehow my daughter always gets left out of the <laughs> the, the thought process there. But hey. You raised her to adulthood. That she should be grateful well, for Well, there you go. Yes. And to so that she got to the point to have children to give me grandchildren. Pretty much. So <laughs> check out the Kona Club. See the all the choices are up there. And the 15th of the month, they're ready. So and if you want it, order ahead of time so that we know and we have enough for you. Next. Demo sales. Demo sales. So if you are looking at upgrading your machine and getting, you know, something new and fun, um, all our machines right now, because we yes. change out the demos a couple times throughout the year. Yep. And so they, most of them, you know, have very... <laughs> Barely been used. Yeah, they just, they, they're, they've just... They're they've been open out. long enough. It's now time that we yeah. move up, open a and new one. So, so it's... We have them so people can see what the machine yes. is like because, you know, and touch it or let it talk to you, whatever. Um, so they're there, and but we need to change them out every once in a while. Day, it? No, it wasn't. It was not. It just not at difference all. in personality. Um, so we take and um, have them there. Yeah. And so there's nothing, you know, they're excellent, but you get a great deal. Yeah, you're going to get a great deal um, on a good machine. Yeah, so, so come on um, in. Yep. Check and check them all out. There's 50 models. Uh, 50 models. So that at this moment goes from yes, <laughs> yes. And that when will, they're gone, they're, those ones are gone. When they're gone, so they're gone. it you've got the whole range from you know just entry level right up until you're you know like where some of us want to be. <laughs> so um, you know because we all have our dreams. We do. So, classes. Yes. Oh, yes. Okay, so if you haven't been on our website yet for a bit, uh, class schedule is up, and we've got some great classes. So we're just going to highlight a couple that are yes. coming up in January. Um, we have... Sweethearts? Sweethearts. I having trouble reading my writing? No, I just... My brain was, you know, we talked about this, yeah. you know, that they're not communicating. Um <laughs> So I have Sweethearts, that's a Sweet Pea design coming yep. up, so that's getting ready for Valentine's. That is on, on the, the 12th. 12th. Then the sample's been up in the store for a little yes. bit. Yeah. Um, and then getting to the finish, that's with Rita. That's on the 13th, so you can just bring in projects that you want to get finished, you maybe need a little bit of help with. So that's with Rita again on the 13th. And then back by popular demand. <laughs> Me. <laughs> no, it's not just you. Um, I have my computer skills class yes. coming up. Yeah. On the it's a two part. So the first one is on the sixteenth, which is a Tuesday, and then part two will be the following week. Yeah. This is PC based, but if you do have an Apple, just like reach out, let me know, um, and then we'll see. Just because all the handouts and everything would be is, slightly it different is yeah. based Oops. on PC, and yeah. so it kind of was a little confusing. So we just need to make sure yeah. that we are give uh, us a heads up when you sign up. Yeah, that so you, we're prepared for that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's just basically transferring files, saving them from the cloud or from downloading from the yeah. internet, those kind of things, organizing them, all that kind of fun stuff. 
And then Kimberbell Club uh, here in Surrey, it's the 18th, and at Country Folk, it's the 20th yep. of this month. So we have the in-person in the morning, Yes. and then mm -hmm. if you want to participate by Zoom, it is going to only be the evening, evening. one now. Yeah. Um, it just... You know, uh, it just works smoother that it, way. Yes, yeah, and when, it's, there's a little bit more interaction. Yeah, this this way for the evening. And game. then, so yeah. evening one, it will not be a recording anymore no. of the earlier one, just because it's going to be in person. Yeah. So you get me live yes. in the evenings. Um, so we're just kind of switching things back up again, just based on a lot of the feedback that we're getting yeah. from from our customers and what's working and what's not. So right. that's kind of where we're going. So, um, but there is a glitch right now. Yes. So it's telling you that um, we're, we've got our text on it, not not our, our text. The developer. The developer the, text. Yeah. Um, so when you try and register, it's telling you that there's lots of room in the class, but when you go to, it's telling you that it's, it's full. full. Uh, it's not true. We've got plenty, plenty of room. So call. Call. Or email. And yes. I mean, Either as way, far we'll, as we'll the in-person in. one, yeah. just show up. Yeah. Okay. You don't, I mean, we'd love to know who's coming in advance, but you can call, let us know, but you can come. Yeah. For the evening one, because you do need the Zoom link, you're going to have to call. And, or email. Or email, and then we'll get that Zoom link sent yeah. out to you. We'll, we'll take care of that from our end. Yep. Yeah. And sit and sew, now that um, all the Christmas and New Year's holidays is over, is back on. So that's every Monday here in Most Surrey. every Monday. There are, Most every, yeah. yeah there if are there's a, a holiday Monday. or something else is scheduled, yeah. then um, there won't be a sit and sew. But um, do try to sign up. Like sometimes it's completely booked. So uh, do let us know if you're showing up just so that we know we've got a space for you. Yeah. Okay, two new things coming up. Okay, so starting the first week in February on the Thursday. So this is going to be the first Thursday of the month. Um, we've got, I know it's not a super clever name yet. That'll come to me. Um, EMB and me. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to be at the store and you can sign up register you, it is registered you're going to come bring whatever projects you're working on i'm going to bring my projects and what i'm i will be here to help you with some projects that you're working on to a get them done b if you're struggling with understanding yeah. or something's not quite working not necessarily machine wise but you're just not sure what's going on or yeah. that kind of stuff so i will be here so it's not a project based as in i will have a project for right. you guys you guys are going to bring what you're working on yes and yeah. um i had someone asked you know because there's um they emailed me about it uh they're trying to still they're having a hard time with uh doing border quilting with, oh that's um, a good one the, yeah the so she's like if i bring in that kind of stuff would you help me yeah because i know she's already attended a few of my classes yeah. and mm -hmm. um she's had some issues with her machine a little bit here and there and so she didn't get to practice right away right and so yeah. her she's not so she's going to bring it in and i will can walk her through the steps again and make sure that she's comfortable with it and so yeah you can do that if we've you know you're working on something and you're not reading the instructions are a little if you know I'll help you sometimes they are or as the longer we do this we begin to branch out and try new new things so sometimes that new new item that you're trying to accomplish border quilting you need a little bit of help with and sometimes it's just Ha actually have a person there and say yeah okay this is right but you just need to tweak this or whatever yeah, that's it's a big help to yeah. have that so um and it's face a great to face. yeah it's great it's fun to get together we'll sew we'll yeah what whatever you know so bring a lunch that kind of thing. yes so. yeah it's it's for the day it's for the day and the last one i got my class coming up so i'm giving you guys a heads up it's the 26 so xander shaw yes she does so this cute. amazing stuff yeah. and um We've been looking at her stuff, and she came out with a really cute pattern that I wanted to take and do for a class. Um, but it was towards the end of last year, and we were in the swing of Christmas stuff yeah. and everything else like that. So it kind of got put onto back burner. So now it is finally able to do it. So we're going to do a wall hanging for this, for your sewing room. And it says, I just want to create pretty things and ignore my adult problems. 
But the key is, is we're going to do the her. It's the hair. It's the hair. So we're going to learn the technique that she has developed and um, patented. Oh. Or, yeah, it's, cool. it's her own design and her own idea type thing. Um, so we're going to, I'll, you know, show you where to find the designs, all that kind of stuff. And how to do the hair. the hair. You can do it curly. You can do it straight. You can put yeah, so oh, many gray. different ways to finish. Have up. to get some gray thread. Yeah. See, if you, I don't know if you could tell, but mine is two toned. It's yeah, a couple that's of different. Right. See, because yeah. we all have more than one color in our hair, and I could use this as inspiration for my sewing table to be that neat. <laughs> <it's> yeah. Not. <laughs> <laughs> no, just whatever. So that's an upcoming class. Yes. I'm looking forward to that one because, like I said, it just it came out. We were swing of Christmas stuff, so now we got that. I'm like, yeah, because I love her stuff. She's got so many different things. So that's that. All right. So I think we're going to do, do this. Yeah, so let's just let's do that. Stuff. Okay. So New Year. Remember yep. last year we or last year. Last week, we oh, were talking sorry. about um, uh, New Year's resolutions. And, you were know, we? yeah, we were. And we were talking about things, and I'm pretty, you know, I don't remember if we mentioned about getting our sewing rooms cleaned or it's just in our head. So, we're going to give some ideas and some tips for the next little bit on for organization. organization. Yes. And today, we've got some really cute stuff to help you with the storage. first part yes storage it is the biggest one of the biggest things in thing if things don't have a proper place to go then they're not going to be they're not going to be put away and you're going to have threads and bobbins yeah. and everything in feet and everything all over the place so, so first up is this is a sewing machine feet organizer because we all have more than one foot so this will hold, I'm not exactly sure how many it will hold, but we've got quite a few little clear pockets. So you can actually see. I think it depends see, on how many you shove yeah, in there. Yeah, <laughs> you can actually see where, what foot you have right there. So I know I've tried various means of storing my feet and Sometimes you just end up in a drawer. So this and then you this lose helpful. Them. Yeah, exactly. And then you're looking for it, and as soon as you buy like the new one, foot. you find you find the old one. And your rims coming. This is uh, <laughs> Janome has a case. Now, okay, I've worked here so long, I'm ashamed to say I didn't know about this. But um, this would be absolutely fabulous for um, your your feet. And other, like, other little things, like your screwdrivers would fit in here. Yes. Um, your um, buttonhole foot, because it's nice and big. Like, you can fit some and of these bigger And different layers. In here. Yeah, there's a different yes, layers. There is another layer that in here. That came with so. my, my machine. I got one of those with my machine. Your 15,000 or your M7? M7. M7, yeah. The M7. See, with the, the higher-end models, they come with these, or some of the little And it's great, because yeah. with all the stuff that it holds in there, like, so I like it. And Fabulous. I, but you do have to put your feet away. Or yes. You, you, or, yeah, you, it, it's not working. You lose your yeah. walking foot. And I know. And I, then I, we go to the sewing stack. I bought a set of these for my granddaughter because uh, she's just starting to, to sew. So she's got the bobbin one. Now you can fit quite a few bobbins in here. And it does, they all come with a lid. Or the ones that stack, and then you just end up with one lid. So yeah. this could be accessories. This is the foot one, thread, and bobbin. So there's quite a variety, and um, and they stack nice and neat. And so you've just got one little tower of everything together. It's all together. Or multiple when we all started out with the threads, this is about you know, where we were. Now we have rooms, but that's not what we started out with when you first started sewing. But even here, like um, like with your bobbins, you know, two or three of these, so you've got all your bobbins. Yes. And then your feet, you know, and then this with your thread, you can yep. do like several of these, you know, so like all your blues are yes. in there. And or, your... I store my, I have bobbins um, sorted by type. My clear bobbins are for regular thread. My blue bobbins are for bobbin thread, and the pink and the red are for embroidery thread. 
Mm -hmm. So that way I know when I'm grabbing it, okay, that is, this gray is actually an embroidery thread. Yeah. Bonnet. So so there's lots of different ways to organize it, but you really do need a place for your yeah. stuff because if there's no place to put it, because I've got a few shelves that I'm trying to organize and it's like, well, I don't have anything to put it in. Yes. So, it's just, yeah, so now exactly. it's just, so instead of a pile on my sewing or my cutting table, it's now a pile on the shelf. Yes. I still can't find anything. <laughs> Yeah, I know. Like probably it, it where my help, stones, <laughs> my but you know, is. if we're not an organized type person to start with, this really does help. It At does. least I have it. <laughs> I can do it. So, and now we're Dana is going to give us the tech talk All for right, the week. So I'm gonna grab this. We're gonna go for a little walk. We're gonna find Dana. I'm gonna flip this around. All right. Found me. I found you. All right. Okay, so uh, today we're going to talk a little bit. I'm just going to sit here for a second. Oh, well, that's fine. We're going to talk a little bit about why you might notice that when you're sewing, um, you're having intermittent tension problems. And what I mean is you sew along and some stitches look good and some stitches don't. Uh, so it's a problem with your tension where your stitches look okay and then they don't and you can't figure out why. So one of the common reasons for that is that your bobbin is not wound exactly right. And it seems like y you would be able to tell that right away. For most of you, you've probably seen, I'll let Lori focus in on this, you've probably seen a bobbin that looks like this and you would notice right away, oh, that's not wound correctly. It's for one thing, really sloppy looking, and for another, it's um, unbalanced so that there's more on one side than the other. Both of those things are bad for bobbins. So these are the easy ones. Uh, this, is, um, this is another example, though, that may not be so easy. At first glance, this bobbin looks like it might be properly wound. It's stacked nicely. It doesn't look sloppy. But if you'll notice, when I take this screwdriver, I can press into it really easily. It's what we call a spongy bobbin. It's wound on there looking correct, but it's not. It's loose enough that if I pull on it right here, it actually pulls. You can pull it around the center, and you don't want that. So that's a good way to test and make sure that your bobbin is tight enough. So what does a properly wound bobbin look like? It looks like this. Um, this bobbin is nicely stacked, not very, not messy at all. And when I press on it, I really can't press very far in. It's like pressing on a spool of thread that you've bought at the store. And also when I pull on it, I cannot make it spin around the center. No matter how tightly I hold this, it just spins the bobbin. So I want to take a look, Lori, at some of the machines and, and uh, talk about the different bobbins that go with the different machines as well okay. as how to put the thread through the path correctly. So we'll start with an easy one. Um, let's just start with this Janome here. Now I have several different bobbins in my hand and these are all different bobbins. I want everybody to remember that just because you have a singer does not mean you need to get that old style singer bobbin that has the curved top and the curved bobbin. You might go to a fabric store and they might say, oh you have a singer, you need this class 66 bobbin. That is not the case. If you don't know what kind of bobbin you need, please call us and let us know the model of your machine and we will let you know. Um, because there are just so many different kinds of bobbins. Um, <clears throat> these two bobbins, for instance, are both Janome bobbins. They are the same exact type of bobbin and they're made the same way, except one is blue and one is clear. This is literally just a preference sort of thing, but, but when you have an embroidery machine, for instance, we have a lot of customers who will use the blue bobbin for regular sewing and then there's a pink version and they'll use that for their embroidery bobbin thread because that's a very different thread. The clear one, the blue one, the pink one, all of the Janome, uh, all of these Janome bobbins though, they're rubberized and that means that they'll, they're just a little bit higher quality than the standard, uh, what we call a class 15 bobbin. And that means that uh, it, if you have a high performance machine, you would want to get these high performance bobbins. So those are just some, some loose tips on what to do. 
But what we want to talk about now is, is how to actually wind the bobbin properly. This all depends on the machine that you have and different machines. I'll show you a few different paths. So this machine, it's a simple Janome. Uh, I forget the model number. It's a 1522RD. Um, this one doesn't show you where to put it. So what would you do in this case, Lori? Um, well, if, if I bought know? yeah, if I bought my machine here, I would definitely get the lessons on that's it that are true, free. That's true. With the machine, uh, but you can pull out your book. There you go. So so don't don't forget. If don't just assume. Okay, it goes around this way and back around this way because that's the way my old machine went. Um, it might be right and it might not. In this case, I believe this machine, it is just from the thread to here and you wrap it around and you pull it in just like you were flossing your teeth. And then you take this bobbin and you want to, there's a, I don't know if you've noticed, but there's a notch in this bobbin. Right here at the top, there's one on the other side too because they go both ways. When you put your bobbin down on the post, you want to spin it around until it clicks. And I just heard it click there, but I'll, I'll just try it again. You want to spin it in place. You want it to click into that into that notch. And that way, you know you've got it in the right place. For some of these, you want to put the thread up through the hole in the top of the bobbin and hold it while you wind. But for some of them, you'll want to, in the direction of winding, and if you don't know what it is, just push it over and while it's, while it's running, like see which direction it runs you'll be going around and around and around and then you will um, start it. So again, just go, do what your book tells you to do. I could show you uh, this one, but I haven't looked at the book, so I don't want to show you wrong. So let's move over to the, um, El this Elma here. <clears throat> this is a, a bit higher end machine than the one that we just looked at. So it has a it has a bit different features, and one of those features is that it has pre-tension units that, that apply to both sewing and bobbin winding. When you're winding the bobbin or when you're sewing on this machine, you follow the path that it gives you. It says one here, two here, and the dotted line is for the bobbin, and so you, we know we need to wrap it back around here. But for all the machines that have this type of top, you want to follow this path through number one and number two and pull it in there. And you, I just heard a click and I probably talked right over it, but it will click when you get it into place. And then, still holding a bit of tension over here by the thread, you want to pull it around into the, the bobbin tensioner. And then you can let it go and you can feel the tension on it at this point. This ensures that you've got it threaded into the right place. If you um, have any questions about that process, just um, just call us up or come by and let us know and we'll, we'll explain further. This one has the same uh, notch that I told you about before, so if I put this on not in the right place and spin it, it clicks into place. And this one is one of those that you, I don't know if you can see that, Lori, but it, it has a base that has a cutter on it. And you would wrap this, I'm not sure I'm going in the right direction, I'd have to look at the book, but um, you would wrap it three times and then cut it underneath there, just like that. And then you can wind the bobbin. Um, one thing that happens a lot to customers is you might be winding the bobbin and somehow it gets under this disc and winds up there. And you've got a little wad of, of thread underneath there and you don't know what to do. Um, I'm just going to show you what to do. You just pull this off and take your thread off and then put this right back on. And just like your bobbin, this thing clicks into place when you've got it in the right place. It's super easy. Don't, don't panic. And then there's one more I want to show you. It's a little bit different. It's similar to the Elma. This is a baby lock <clears throat> with a bit different system, but sort of the same concept. This one it um, does give you the path to, you can see it, it explains to you how to do this, but it also has a pretensioner for it. And what you want to do with this one is you do one, two, and three here. And so to do this, I'm holding it like I would dental floss and pulling it in there. 
and I want to make sure that it's nice and snug in there and I'm going to hold this and pull it past there and under there making sure that I'm getting it in there nice and tightly and do you see what happened here when I let go of that too soon and in the right in the wrong position it fell out this can ruin your machine thread is so destructive if it happens to you just make sure that you you pull it back into place and then do that and when I say ruin a machine it you'll notice it it will cut uh, it'll literally put cuts into the plastic of your machine and it only takes once well the thread moves at a high rate it and it's does. very thin it's very abrasive too so if you don't believe me take, take it and cut somebody with it. <laughs> you don't want to do that well you take and if you're a baker a lot of times you'll take thread or whatever maybe the thicker one but um, to cut if you're making cinnamon rolls the best way to cut them that is, is with the thread not a knife because you get a cleaner nicer cut and it's and it's not because and it's not just because dough is softer than we are. Although some of us feel a little bit like a dough boy, but um, <laughs> it's because thread it, it is sharp. You you don't realize it's just like getting a paper cut. You can get a thread cut as well, and so can your machine. Yep. So anyway, if you if you um, just to recap, make sure that you look at your manual. If you don't have a manual come by, call us, talk to us, and explain to us what model you have, and we'll help you learn how to thread your machine properly. If you are new to sewing, sign up for a, a, a lesson. There are more lessons for beginners that will be opening up very soon, and even if you're not a beginner, check your book anyway. <laughs> you, you, may, you may just be thinking that you're doing it right, and you might just be getting lucky, so if you've ever had random tension problems, that's a good place to start. All right. Thank you. Thanks, Lori. Okay. Don't you can watch me walk. <laughs> Did my model walk. Okay. One last thing I want to show you guys. Okay. So um, we've had some questions on this for a bit. And it's New Year. Getting our machines serviced. So we've talked about this before. Um, we want machine you guys to bring your machines in for servicing before there's a problem yeah. so we save a problem because it's a lot cheaper just to get it serviced yes. okay and I know like we've got a ton of machines I mean we've got two techs working full-time full speed and then we've got Tom in there you know doing a whole bunch as well um, but you know when you're good you're good <laughs> he yes. takes some more intricate problems yes um, so when but we still have it takes a long yes, time we, exactly. we are because yeah. You know, we've got so many, so many machines. Here. You know, so many customers that prefer, you know, to getting bring their machine here. Yeah. So um, <laughs> I do. So it gets backed up, yes. and so I know sometimes when you bring in your machine and you're like, ah, oh, you know, and just for its regular service, and you're sitting there going, oh, it should be in here too. Um, That's okay. So you're going, oh, I can't be with, you know, and it, you're told like it's a four to six. Right now, it's an eight, eight weeks. Um, wait, and you're going, well, I can't be without it for that long. Well, here's a thought. We have the ability to pre-book your appointment. Yes. Okay. So this is for regular service. This is not if your machine yeah. is broken um, because we can't guarantee that it can be done in a day because we don't know if we've got the parts and we don't know the extent of what the, the exactly. issue is. Okay? But for regular maintenance. For regular maintenance. Yeah. And we all know when we need to maintain our, 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 our machines. I've got my next year's booked already. Yes, so you can pre-book yeah. these out. I have yeah. two machines. I book them six months apart. I yeah. book one in, I, yeah. one in March and one in September. Yeah. And so I go into the calendar. I'm going to show you how to do this amount. Okay, so I'm going to just... You can do this. Uh, here. Just hold that for know. me. Okay, all right. Can you... Got it. You got it. Okay, so... Um, we're going to show you how simple this is. Okay, so you're going to go to the website. Look how beautiful it is. I it's know, just amazing. It's lovely. Yes. You're going to go up to the service, machine service tab here and click on that. It's going to bring you to the machine service page. And on this page, you're going to find all about our servicing, our what you need to bring when you bring your machine in, yep. and the repair costs. Okay? Um, and it tells you, like, you know, please don't bring your instruction book, accessory tray, any extra feet. Don't need all that. That's okay. Right, yeah. It's just gonna take up. So now we've got 
the little thing here that says book now. So we're going to book in here. And the little calendar comes up. What do we want? Machine service now. You'll notice that right now, the earliest it tells us is March 24th. Okay. No, 20th. March the 7th. Yeah, well, sorry, March of 24. There oh, we go. Oh, sorry. Okay. Yeah, it's the yeah. year. Okay. That is because we're booked, like, right up. If the date is gl is grayed out, that day is not available. Yeah, that's right. As much as we would love to have you in, yes, that we means can. we've already booked that day. And then, so then you would pick any one of these days. So I'm going to pick the 7th. My machine needs to be in here by 930 in the morning, give or take. Yeah. Then you're going to hit next. Then it's going to want your information, your name, email, phone number. It tells you what here. And then it needs your name, machine make and model. Okay. So you would type in here the machine. So That's singer. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and then down here, the model number. So right. like if it's a Janome, like Janome. And then it would be like M17, yeah. M7, whatever, whatever it is. It is yeah. So that we are prepared for what's coming in. Yeah. And then you would just hit book now, and then it books it. it and books. it'll give yep. you a reminder email yep. there. And then on that day, you'll bring your machine in. Now, a couple of questions that we get. Okay, first of all, if I brought my machine, huh? Yeah, so if I brought my machine in just on a walk in, you know, with people booking their machine, machine going to get bumped. No. No. We have two spots every day, one for each tech yep. that is held for same day service. The rest of the time, they are doing their, the machines the that, are, that are here, in are here yeah. that need more intense repairs, whatever it is. But the thing is, when you book your appointment, it's not bumping anybody. Right. Okay. What this does is, if you were to bring your machine in right now, the you would be told that it, your machine would go in line and it wouldn't get serviced until probably the 7th. Yeah, that's right. It's the exact same spot. Okay. The difference between this is, is that... When you book, you get to keep your machine at home with you, and you can continue to sew. Exactly. Yeah. And then the morning of the 7th, you'll bring it in. It'll get serviced, and then you, you go for coffee, go groceries, whatever it is. Come back at the end of the day and pick it up. And take so you, it home and put it back in its place. Yes. So you're not without your machine. That's so you don't right. have to yes, sit here exactly. without it. Yeah. So you're not jumping the line. You're not bumping anyone. You're not getting bumped by somebody who is booking. You're still, you're just you, reserving your space. In, yeah. Your space. And like I said, I do this a year. Like my machines are booked for 2025. Yeah. Hey, or See, the end of December for one and January for the next one. So like I just keep moving as soon as I pick up a machine, take it home. I book the next one because if you sew a great deal, like most of us who are here, um, they need yearly maintenance. Just, yes. It's like it's just it goes in for a spa day. You know, yeah. like it has fun. And That's another question. How often do you service your machine? Okay. So if you are doing heavy duty industrial sewing with your machine, home sh machine, like you're sewing all day, every day, you're probably going to need to come in like every six months. Yes. Yeah. Very few people fall in that. This is true. Like okay. it's not a bit if it's not a business, yeah. it's just you sew. Yeah. If you're doing regular sewing that you're, you know, you're doing some, you know, mending constantly, you're making quilts and you're sewing on sewing. a pretty regular basis like two or three times a week, you'll need to bring in your machine about once a year. About once a year. Yeah. If you pull out your machine like maybe yeah. once every two or three months because you're going Doing to hemming, you're going to hem yeah. a pair of pants and then the next you know oh you've got to sew on a buttonhole and so you use it very very rarely that it collects a lot of dust in between using <laughs> um then it only needs to be serviced probably every, every two, three, three two, years. two to three years yes, exactly. you know just there and that and you don't want to go over three years no because the oil will get gummy yes and you don't so, want that moving through the machine so no Fix it, like, get it taken care of before it causes a problem. Yeah. So, and if, okay, Addie's over there going, mm, it's better for the three. Yeah. If you haven't used your machine and it's been sitting there longer yes. than three years, service it before, before you use it because that oil is going to be gummed up. If you don't plan on using your machine for a while, don't worry about running it in and servicing no. it at that moment because you're just going to have to service again. So if 
if you haven't used it or you've inherited a machine from, you know, grandma yes. or something yeah. like that, bring it in and have it serviced before you use it. Yes. Exactly. Um, just because. And okay. those ones, um, I don't know if you can book those ones cause unless you know because you don't know if it's broken or if there's a problem with it. So. Yeah, well, you're not using it anyway, so yeah, a so few bring more yeah, weeks isn't yeah, so really bring it bad. in and do it that way instead of booking online. But yeah, yeah. so this yeah. is how we get prepared. This yes, is exactly. looking forward. Yes. So if you've got machines and they need service, look now. Get on the on the computer and book your book. service date, yeah. so that you know when it is. It gives you a peace of mind that you know it's going to be. It's got a spot. Yeah. For the spa, it's it's like yeah, like a yeah, spa. Exactly. You have to book yeah, in advance. You can't exactly, just walk yeah. in. Um, I mean, you can well, walk you can, in, but you may, you'd be waiting. Yeah. So yeah. So that's that. That's that. That's it. Okay. So I think that's about. So that's it today. for today. Yes. And uh, we'll be back at it next week. We will with more information. Yeah. More tips. We got some really more good. Funnies. We got. Yeah. We supposed to be funny today. I don't know. I don't remember. No, I think we were at the beginning. We were at the beginning. I, I want to know about the Laurel and Hardy thing, though, or Martin and Lewis. Don't care. I'm Martin. Yeah. <laughs> I just think is at the end of this, I just hope I end up tall and skinny. <laughs> the tall? Sorry. Okay. I know we're over, but I just got to share this with, with you because it's really, really funny. So, grandson, Alec gets in the car yesterday and he's like grandma can you shrink and I'm like well I said yes kind of I says as you get older and I was explaining you know that you know you get older your bones change density you might not type have thing given, you might have given him more information well I know wanted, but, but it just I want he, he likes information yeah. like trust me some of the books he has me read is like too much information um so we were explaining that, you know, as you get older, you know, the bones and then with gravity, you know, can make you shrink. And I was explaining that my dad, growing up, he was like 5'8", but when he passed away, when he was almost 100, um, he was measuring probably about 5'6". Yeah. So he had lost, and then that. And so he's like, oh, that's really good information. So then her, his mom gets in the car and goes, what are you talking about? Oh, just how you're shrinking, mom. <laughs> Yeah, it was funny. I love my grandsons. Yeah, They're yeah, good we for all do, but okay. All righty. All right, so now so that's funny. Go. And okay. we will have have a great day. Yes. Enjoy freezing your rear end off this week. Apparently, it's going to get cold. <laughs> um. Yeah, okay. and we will see you guys on the other Next side week. of the popsicle. Okay, bye, bye. everybody.